thanks for being here. I'm so excited. So excited to have you here. It was windy day. You made your way, even the ones from Rochester. Um, I'm Amy Beachy. <laughs> I'm the manager of the entrepreneurship program for Fulton Economic Deve Development um, Corporation here in Rutger in Fulton County, and I manage the entrepreneurship programs for FedCo. So since 2010, FedCo has been building BizGrow, our entrepreneurship program, and adding resources that help our small businesses grow. And through BizGrow, we offer low-interest loans, training funds, business planning competition or business planning classes seminars on business-related topics, and competitions like this one, the first pitch. And when we started thinking about this competition, so that was way back in 2019, some of you are still here that were in on those, kind of the ground floor. Um, the goal was to not necessarily have students start a business, but that would be fantastic if you do. But the goal was to just help you learn the process of, of starting a business and what, and what you have to think of in, in, when, in going through that process. Um, Fundamentally, that process is the same for all businesses. We have hundreds of businesses that go through our program every year, and that process is the same for them. So through, your, through writing your business plans and practicing your pitches, um, students learn skills such as planning, financial responsibility, supply and demand, and the importance of relationships. And entrepreneurship could even become a career path for some of you, and we hope so. So on behalf of FedCo, I want to thank our three Fulton County schools, Caston, Rochester, Tippecanoe Valley, and for supporting the program and continuing to work with students. So even though the last two years have been rough, we've <laughs> battling COVID and e-learning, we've managed to get through this program each time to our third annual, and, and you're here again today, so thank you. So please allow me to introduce those teachers that have helped and coaches. So Amy Myers from Caston, thank you, Amy, and Joe Coke has been their coach was a, a previous judge, of course. Now he's living the retired life, and we're, we're just putting him to work. So thank you for supporting. Joel Lau from, where's Joel? I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't see you. Joel from uh, Rochester, and Aaron Ebrick from Tippecanoe Valley. So thank you all. We appreciate it. We have some nice cash prizes today as well. So thanks to Fulton County REMC, our event sponsor. We can clap for them, I think. Let's clap for them. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. They gave us fifteen hundred dollars in cash prizes. So first place, we'll get five hundred dollars in cash today. Tiffany's been carrying the cash around. Second place, four hundred dollars. Third place, three hundred. Fourth, fifth, and sixth, each a hundred. So everybody will leave here with something today. I want to introduce our judges. So here uh, to my right, Andrew Horstman, the president and CEO and our sponsor, of our sponsor, Fulton County REMC. So it's Andrew's first year with us. Next to him, Monty Hoffman, the owner of Machine Casting Specialties in Rochester Ford. He's our veteran this time. <laughs> he's, he's the leader of the group. Next to him, Kendra Chaditsky from, she's an independent agent with the Smith Sawyer Smith Agency, first year, and our timekeeper, who is probably the most important person here. Too, right, Jillian? Jillian Smith. Uh, the executive director of the Fulton County Chamber. So we're glad to have her back with us. So thank you to our judges. They're all very busy people, and they've given their time to score your business plans ahead of time and be with us today. I'd also like to thank Tiffany Futrell, right down here, Tiffany. Okay. Yeah, there you go. She is the interim director for FedCo and does a lot to make this event happen each year. I'd like to thank my colleague, Kim Pinkerton. Kim, can you put your hand up? Um, who is here to help us today and has been every year since we started. So Kim is happy to help if you need anything along the way. Just feel, to, feel free to grab her. RTC is filming the event. They're in the background. We thank them for being here today. It, is, it will be aired live on RTC4. And then they're telling me it will be re-aired tonight, probably sometime, and off and on in the next few months. So hope you can catch it there. So before we call our first team up, let's review the timing of the event. Just as a reminder, each team will have seven minutes to pitch their business idea in the order listed on your program. The judges will have six minutes to ask questions. There will be four minutes of setup time between each team. After, and, and you will be given a warning from Jillian when it, if you if the two minute mark, and again at the thirty second mark with her like her nice red yeah tools there. Yes, <laughs> she's very strict. Okay, so after all teams have pitched, the judges will deliberate for up to 30 minutes um, and determine the rank of each team. We don't give them much time, so they have to work efficiently, and I'll tell you, they're already sweating. 
Each school has entered two teams this year. So we got through all that. So let's get going. Let's call up the first team. Tippecanoe Valley, it's Hello World. All right. Good morning. I want to personally thank you judges for being here. I understand you guys are busy people and it takes a lot of time to get here and here. So thank you on behalf of everyone. My name is Andrew Burke. I'm a senior at Tippecanoe Valley High School and my product is Hello World. Hello World is the world's first audio to audio translator. It will feature 10 languages initially and is completely free of charge for the user. Hello World has a sleek and simple design as you can see up there. You'll select the language that you wish for the audio app to speak back. You'll tap the smiley happy little globe right there and he'll listen to you for what you say and then Hello World will give you a text verification of what you just said so you don't want to send something and have it say something that you don't want it to say. Hello World was built on the idea of, well, for me, I wasn't a great student my freshman and sophomore year. I took French for both those years and I may or may not have gotten an F in one of the semesters there. <laughs> Languages weren't my strong suit. But, like that quote says, that limit is, the limits of my language are the limits of my world. Because I only speak English, I'm limited to only interacting with other English speakers. I can't speak to someone who speaks Spanish or German or French. But Hello World would be able to do that and bring together the world in a global community. It's also very affordable with it being free of charge. So, like I said, Hello World will initially have 10 languages, which are up there, English, Chinese, French, Spanish, German, Russian, Hindi, Portuguese, Japanese, and Bengali. Those are some of the most popular languages and most common languages found around the world. Hello World will also be able to reach more people because it's free of charge. So initially, we will target travelers, but because of its simple design, we can have any age really in any income because of the free of charge. And for students like me weren't, who weren't very good, it might be good to have an audio to audio translator to hear that. But initially, we will focus on travelers who are flying across the world or traveling cross country, but there's lots of different people meeting there. So how we get our pricing? With it being free of charge, we're going to use advertisements on there. A standard banner ad is 10 cents per ad. With Hello World, we estimate that we can get just 0.4% of travelers, which would be 5.6 million people. If we could get just 0.4% of travelers to open the app once, we'll earn about $560,000. So that is just with them opening the app once, and it's free to users so they don't have to purchase anything in there. So based on industry standards, about the average app development cost is $300,000. The owner pay, I don't want any pay, I just want to help people learn more things so they won't fail French like I did, or they can speak to other people. And then for the employee payroll, we have to pay people to record for the translators. I don't speak any of those languages, unfortunately. But there are translators who may be native English or Spanish or um, Bengali speakers who can translate for there. And those pricings are up there and on the business plan. And we will also don't need any wrap and rent because it is just an app. We don't need a warehouse facility. And the advertising, we've set about $110,000 aside for advertising to spread out the word. So we will have about a $6,000 deficit our first year. But if people use the app more, then we will earn back more money. So if that standard is just based off of people opening the app once. So what sets Hello World apart? There are some other translators up there, like Google Translate, Grammarly, and then Triplingo. They're all mobile apps, but Hello World is the one that is completely free to the users. It is the only audio to audio translator, and it's the only one that has a text verification. So thank you judges for listening, I appreciate it. What a great idea. See this being very useful in just our day to day lives here locally, too. We have a lot of um, people from other languages here in our community that have a difficult time communicating, just transacting, you know, doing simple transactions um, in our office, even. And so I can see that there's a real need for this. So thank you. So, is there anything else other than your difficulties with French that <sighs> made you decide that? 
this is something you wanted to pursue? Well, that's kind of where the idea, idea came from, is I can't speak to other people, but I thought, you know, especially with like Russia and Ukraine, like how there's a lot of divide in our world, and even locally there's sometimes conflicts that happen, and I feel like an audio-to-audio -audio translator could be a great first step to help bringing those people together. So as this uh, app takes off and where people start using it, um, I know this might not have been part of the original plan, but did you have a plan on how to grow the app, maybe include like in-app purchases or anything of that nature? I thought about it, but I thought if I just kept it free, completely free to the users, then that way we could be set apart from these other translating apps that have these in-app purchases or limited features. But I thought, well, we'll start with 10 languages, and how we could grow is get even more languages with specific, there's different dialects, and that would be how we could grow. I think you've thought it out very well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great idea. Okay. Season Camper from Caston. You have four minutes to kind of set up if you need to. And I'm Skylar from Caston, and I'm a sophomore. So, so, <laughs> have you ever thought of going camping and you're thinking of all the delicious food you're going to cook, but then you have to pack the seasonings for the food? and you just make a big mess or there's too much space taken up, that's why you need to buy our product, Season Camping. <coughs> so our vision in creating this product was to create something aimed at outdoor enthusiasts with the intention of eliminating mess and freeing up storage space in your pack when packing cooking spices. So our capsules are a single serving spice capsule that are packed in a dissolvable vegan gel capsule. And our spices include salt and pepper, garlic herb, Italian, chili, and Caribbean jerk. Those are all gonna be in a variety pack right here. And these are packaged in our airtight, durable plastic container, and it's meant for reuse. So it's more green than having something, you know, plastic that you throw away use it over time and I don't know if Skylar mentioned this but the original pack includes six capsules and we will also have refill packs available those will be packaged in a paper bag so it's also green it biodegrades so there's no there's no waste there and here is just a little picture of our case and our the capsules as you can see the cases on the left side it fits six capsules and then on the right side that's just a bigger image of the capsule that we would be using to fill our or to put our spices in so every year i go camping with my grandma and she loves cooking but she puts her own mix of spices into a pill bottle which is where we got our idea for the capsule but it makes a huge mess every time. She always complains about how much she needs to clean up. So this would be just a great idea to give to her. She will have her spices that she always loves to use and easy as that. And my inspiration for this product came from my inability to cook and season food. I don't go camping very often. However, I'm not a great cook and Aside from salt and pepper, I don't really know what other seasons, seasonings there are or how to use them. So something like this that's pre-packaged and just a single serving would really be helpful for someone like me who can't cook. 
So our business is targeted towards individuals who cook outdoors. So campers, hikers, fishers, and hunters. But in the future, when our business grows a bit more, we can also market towards um, people like K or college students who can't really afford to buy all those seasonings, who don't really know how to season their food. And yeah. yeah. And so to reach our target market, we plan on using things like social media, so platforms like Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, where we can really reach a lot of our potential customers. Next, kind of going along with the social media, we plan on using influencers. So that's going to help build our brand image, and that's going to build up some recognition, and also that will also help to reach some more potential customers. And then we're going to use online press, things like blogs and internet articles, that will hopefully, again, reach more customers. And lastly, we're going to turn to print media. There's a lot of outdoor magazines that we can put ads in, or even newspapers that we could use. So our pricing is a $5 basic, which is like this variety pack that just comes with six of one of each of our capsules. And this is a durable, airtight plastic container that is meant to be usable, like reusable. And then we have a $3 refill that comes in that, like she said, the uh, paper bag that's biodegradable, and you can buy each individual spice. Those also come with six. So cost and projected profitability. So some of the things that we're going to have to account for in our business would be our dissolvable capsules, our plastic cases, our refill bags, our spices, and our capsule filler, as well as a couple 3D printers to start out with. And some other things we're going to have to account for are our rent, our pay, and we're also going to be setting aside for setting aside money for growth and development and taxes, of course, and things like emergencies. So with all that in mind, our total expenses will be around $57,824.93. However, with the expectation of selling about 15,500 units in our first year of business, we expect to make about $58,125. So if you're wondering where that number came from, the 15,500 units, it came from how many people camp throughout the year. According to IN.gov, about 15.5 million people go camping each year in Indiana. And it, it's been growing since the start of COVID-19. It's been, so far actually, a 67% increase. So if we reach 1% of those individuals, that'd be great. But the 0.1% is that 15,500 people that will purchase our product and have those units. So, our competitive edge. There's no other product quite like Season Camper out in the market. Of course, plastic cases, for spices exist and dissolvable capsules exist. However, Season Camper combines both of those. And also, Season Camper is green. With the dissolvable capsules, there's no mess, and the refill bags, they're biodegradable, and the plastic cases, you can reuse those. What's better than being green? Being out in the green. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Did you girls 3D print your own case? Yeah, it is. Very good. Would you like to see it? Yes, please. I don't know, what a clever idea, and I think it's, I like that it's a green product and you're not leaving waste behind when you can. Yeah, well, that's what we were kind of aiming at because a lot of outdoor people are very environmentally conscious, so we wanted to cater to that audience. In the insurance costs when you're developing a food product, that's always an important factor to consider. Is yeah, yeah, that's factored into our. Um, we didn't know exactly where to put it, so it's factored in with our rent because that's more of like a monthly cost for us, and so is our rent. So we have the number in there. It's just factored in with our <laughs> rent. Good. So you said you weren't a very good cook, and you trained your product. <laughs> No, because it's not its not an actual thing yet. But if it was, I would certainly use it. Well, it looks pretty close to being an actual thing. Yeah. yeah. Pretty good job so far. Thank you. 
I don't have anything. Great job. Thank you. Okay, our next team from Rochester, Soul Safe Entry System. You have four minutes to set up. I know you have a pretty large prop. Good morning, everybody. Uh, our company is SoulSafe. This is, I'm Wesley, this is Eric, and this is Tanner. Um, and Tanner's going to start us off. All right. An estimated $20.64 billion is spent on home security every year. Around 1 million homes are burglarized each year. Standard locks like Quickset, Schlag, Baldwin, Multi-T locks are easy to break and pick. Once you learn how to pick one lock, the same general strategies work for every other lock. For, most, for the most experienced lock picker, it will take less than one minute to open a standard door lock. There's a few pictures of our setup. <clears throat> our mission as a, um, as a, a company is to make uh, homes and businesses more secure in a simple, easy way. Um, with this, we are also aiming to modernize and uh, unlock the future of uh, the security and uh, with a stylish uh, door. This will also make little things easier, such as bringing groceries and other small things, small nuisances in your lives. We also plan to keep uh, the production local and uh, the manufacturing local. Our product would completely eliminate all worry of a lack of a, of a lockpick break-in. This is because our product has no handles or exterior lock. With our design, you can open the door with only a touch of a foot to the bottom of the door. The door works by using an insole that can be inserted into any shoe, and the inside, inside the door is a battery-powered smart reader that unlocks the deadbolt in an instant and automatically locks when closed. Now, we would have a chip that would go into the toe portion of the insole. These insoles can be moved from one shoe to another. We customize these insoles to fit your shoes. Now, if you had shoes that didn't have an insole, like heels or um, flip-flops or sandals, 
you would have those shipped into us and we would put the chip into your actual shoe itself. And uh, yeah, if you're gonna order extra insoles in order for it to be secure and safe, we wouldn't give your chip to any person, obviously, because they are for the door. So you'd have to give us the serial number and the ID of your door. There's a picture of the insole. Now our door would be a solid composite door with a sleek and modern design. Uh, we have a variety of things you could put on it, including windows and colors and even different housings. We could have circular ones or ones like these. And on the inside, we would have a handle because they're not saloon doors, they will open one way and um, have to open it somehow. And we have a manual one-sided deadbolt on the inside. There's a picture of the housing. We would, okay. There is a central chip inside of the housing, just like outside uh, the school with your lanyards, how you unlock the door, same, same concept with your foot. Um, like I said, the insoles chip pin number would be matched up to the sensor, so it's only this chip will unlock that door. The chip, when it is connected, it will send a, uh, a signal up to the handle, unlocking the door, making push it open without a handle. There's, it's extremely safe, there is no keyhole, you cannot pick it. Here are some products with concepts that are related to our product. Ring, other Bluetooth door locks, and chip reading doors. These products have concepts that are similar to ours, but are not like ours. Um, for our finance, finances, um, our, uh, in order to produce our products, it costs around $568. Um, and the retail cost of our uh, product is about uh, $1,065. Um, this is not too far off of some regular doors that are being sold. Uh, the percent profit for this from the retail to production, or production to retail, is around, is over 40%. Uh, and to, the startup cost, so within the first three months, it would cost, it's going to cost about um, 1.6 million, which sounds like a lot until you hear our um, profit. Our net profit over the first year is estimated to be around 120 million, a little bit over. And after one year, uh, and that's only with 2% of our target audience, which is uh, higher class um, uh, homeowners. Uh, and it's also with only one door being sold to that family, or the, to that homeowner first. Um, this also excludes businesses and other companies that could buy our door. Um, through the second and third years, I've, uh, we've made adjustments to where we would think that two doors would be sold per um, buyer, and uh, it'd be about 4% of our target audience would be reached at that time. Uh, with that 4.5% uh, of our target, that's doubling uh, the growth, and we'll end up with over $500 million, uh, net profit over those three years. There's the second and third year, and then that's it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So is there anything specific that made you decide this was something you guys wanted to do? Was there somebody in the group, or were you just brainstorming yeah. looking for an idea? Yeah, so when I carry groceries, it, it, I don't think I'll allow myself to take more than one trip. It's extremely <laughs> inconvenient. I don't care how purple my arms are. And um, doing this, I don't have to try to open a doorknob with my elbow for two minutes. So it's a lot easier. I think that was my biggest inspiration. Yeah, um, just within when we decided to start making this prototype, um, a number of times I went grocery shopping with my parents and then I got home and we'd each have at least six bags in all of our arms. And we'd come up to the door and my dad would have to set down his key the bags and then get his keys out, unlock the door, pick up back pick it back up, go into the kitchen, set the bags back down, then go back and close it. It was a lot. So I realized once 
we had actually made the prototype, how useful this could actually be. For me, the inspiration was kind of like how easy it is for modern doors to be broken into. Someone with the simplest of skill sets can open up that door, and we are completely getting rid of that whole area of the door, making it a lot more secure for homeowners, businesses. Maybe you covered this already, but so if the battery dies, or how do you get, you know, how do you get gain access? If, if um, so with the, it's going to be connected to the house's um, power supply. So there's no, not really any, actually no it's not, sorry. It's got its own battery, but if you need to, you can connect it to the house's power supply. So that way, if a power outage happens, it does have its own, uh, you know, battery power battery. battery to power itself. Um, if you if you do need to, you know, get back in somehow, uh, it, sh it should always be working with that battery. Uh, any uh, thoughts about, uh, I guess, like sales staff and how you would ramp up the, the sales aspect of the business? Um, with the sales, I think that the first year is very much going to be getting our product out there because it is a door, it's a bigger object and not many people are going to be wanting to interact with it. But once a few people start to own the door and these people start seeing how useful it is and with the advertising on Instagram, I feel like we can, it, Instagram was our main point of advertising, I think, I believe is what I asked, uh, rounded into. Um, but with, with the more advertising, the more people that buy it, I feel like it's just going to keep doubling up and the more people that buy it, the more people that are going to see it. Thank you. Right, thank you. Problem solvers. They're all solving problems. Okay, the next team from Tippecanoe Valley, Reboot. start our presentation by saying thank you for taking the time out of your day to come and listen. Um, we greatly appreciate it. We are Reboot. I'm Carissa. This is Brittany and that's Abby. And we are all juniors at Tiffany Valley High School. And we are rebooting lives one at a time. Our product's Reboot. It's a medical boot with breathable fabric, three changeable soles, and a locking system. Our first sole is most comparable to a regular boot. It's hard, but it still is stable. And our second sole is a little bit softer for your foot, so it's a little bit more comfortable, but it's still stable. And our third sole is more gel-like, and it's most comparable to a shoe, so you can wear that one once you're closer to being out of the boot. Our locking system provides ankle flexion, which allows for physical therapists to control how much movement you can get. So the problem we found is that 67% of patients that have been treated with the original medical boot for at least two weeks have reported new or worsened sight pain at the time of transitioning out of their boot. Our solution to that problem is that the reboot prevents additional pain that the traditional boot causes with our new technology. So this idea came to me. Um, I was in the boot for about five months. Um, I was in an accident. Um, I broke my leg. But I had harsh bruising 
the whole five months. Um, I had added pain to the bottom of my foot from the hardness while I was transitioning out of the boot that was unrelated to my injury. So when our teacher proposed this idea, I was like, I know what I could do. And Reboot was formed. So our target market would be injured athletes, those with below the knee injuries, those looking for a comfortable boot, and those tired of the added pain from that medical boot. We price our boot at $1,000, and the expenses for the boot with the air pump is $300, but the add-on soles is $300 for all three, and the breathable fabric is $10, which is a total of $610 to make it. So that leaves us with a profit of $390 and a profit percent of 64 we plan on selling 419 boots in our first year. We got this from 0.1% of our top competitors list, which we found, um, which we included on the next slide. And we think, again, that we can make 0.1% of their top sales. So that would be $419,000. We included our supplies, how much that would make to make the boot for the 419 the equipment, owner's pay, we just wanted to put it back into our business to make us better. Um, advertisement, we wanted to put a good chunk of money towards that. With a total of $417,000 roughly for our first year, leaving us a profit of $1,910. And again, this is the top competitors list, um, Bragg is our top competitor. Number one, they sell $241 million in a year. So we just want not even a, not even half of a percent. <laughs> what sets us apart from other medical boots is our customizable sole options, the motion lock, the breathable fabric, and that's our competitive edge that makes us better than the other boots. And Brittany's physical therapist, Amber Trump says, traditional boots are a pain, this is a great idea. So who's ready to kick old medical boots to the past? Thank you. Brittany, I like how you've turned your unfortunate situation into a positive and created a positive solution. So good job, all for you. Thank you. So does the, the interchangeable soles, do they go on the inside or do they go on the outside? We were thinking the outside. Okay. So it's just like a little sliding. So I was, when I read your proposal, I was thinking there must be a lot of testing costs involved to get this approved by the medical community. And um, if someone is going to buy this, they would want their insurance to pay for it because it's $1,000, so yes. they get covered by health insurance. So I wondered if you factored in those costs in your plan. So we, we thought about this, and mine, myself, I with insurance, I was still paying like $500. So with insurance, I guess it just depends on what insurance you have and how much they will cover. So I don't, with insurance, it should be less than $1,000. Have you talked to anybody in the medical field to gauge their interest to whether this is something that... Well, at physical sell? therapy a couple weeks ago, I, I was like, I want to tell her because all the time she's like, you're walking like this because of the boot. Like, this is why you're struggling. And she was like, it's a great idea. She loves it. So having help from her and other people, hopefully they will love it too. Uh, they actually took both my questions I had. So uh, <laughs> I was going to ask about the doctor and <laughs> the other stuff as well. So great job. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We have a lot of teams thinking about feet this year. So you're having a theme here. Okay, next team. Tread lightly, staying with the theme. From Caston.
Hello, my name is Austin Degg. I'm Abby Kron. And I'm Quincy Pernet. And we are Tread Lightly. Our company makes shoal treads for different purposes. They're interchangeable and you, whether you are walking and you need to go for a quick run along a muddy trail or go on the track or just walk around and do something else, whether there's ice or something, you can just real quickly change your sh tread on your shoe and go about your business. What, what inspired our product is, so I personally am a cross country and track runner. I am on my feet a lot and one thing about shoes are they're expensive and they're kind of hard to store. I can't even fit my track spikes in with the rest of my clothes from my bag. I have to carry another bag for them. So part of the idea is it's just easier to store and the rest of it is one thing for me is the soles of you know, the treads on my shoes wear down really easily as well and create foot problems. So with our product we can have easily changed sole and treads instead of having to buy a whole new shoe, which is a lot more expensive. So we're planning on using a snap click technology similar to Legos as you're being shown now. In this way the athletes will save money because they won't have to buy quite as many pairs of shoes. They can just buy the treads separately and then switch them out with the shoe itself. They're easier to store this way because instead of having to store multiple pairs of shoes, you have one main pair of shoes to store along with the treads itself. So our feasibility and target audience is going to be multi-sport athletes like my friend Austin here and any like active adults in everyday life. Our demand for our product is going to be really anyone who has multiple pairs of shoes, which is pretty much all of you, and for their activities and they can also downsize their shoe collection. And the, they only have to change the treads on their shoes, so you only have to have one actual shoe itself and for all your different activities. So we're planning on marketing to social media, such as Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. Doing this, um, we're also planning on including sports websites and hopefully into their stores, such as like Dunham's and Dick's Sporting Goods. And our estimated market size, including this, is going to be around 600 to 8,000 people, with a possible expansion in the future going down to children's sizes, because parents have to spend a lot of money on kids constantly growing out of shoes, especially if they do play more than one sport. So if this parent can just buy one pair of shoes and then change out the treads so their kid can only need one pair of shoes, it'd save a lot of money in the long run. So our projected cost is we're going to be outsourcing to a company in Portugal who when we, we have to create custom molds for the treads and the shoes, which leads to a pair of shoes costing $4 per pair and $4 for the pair of the top of the shoe and then $3 per pair of treads. And we're going to be offering our starting price at $47 for a base pair of shoes available in sizes 5 to 11 and with two pairs of treads of your choice. Thank you for taking this time to consider our business. We hope to work with you in the future and invest in it. And thank you. <laughs> uh, so with the product, um, I, it's interesting to separate the shoe and, the, and the, I guess the sole um, for the tread. Is, is there a plan to also, you know, I guess replace one or the other or revamp one. So like if your tread wears out, could you get it yes. you know, reworked or you just have to buy a new one? He's be selling the tread separately for ten dollars per pair and then base price for the shoes is around thirty dollars. Okay. How did you find a place that would produce this for you? Um, I looked online yeah. until I found a company that was willing to do another mold like a custom mold for the shoe and the tread separately. Okay. And then we did our base product off of that. I like that you created a solution for you know, something that you now need to create something doing what you like to do. Um, I'm wondering, you know, this inside, I think it's smelly and, <laughs> and did, you know, and that might need replaced. So are you considering some sort of insert to replace inside the shoe? Or what would be the lifetime of the how long could you keep replacing the, the tread on the outside without replacing the inside? Possible 
soul inserts are also um, in our future with our expansion. But the shoes themselves, we imagine, would last possibly just a little bit longer than the average shoe you have, but with the different treads. It's very affordable. It's very affordable products. Have you thought about what different types of treads that you might go after? So at the moment, we are mainly focusing on like sports. So for me, running shoes, you can run along on trails or track spikes. But we've also considered non-slipping shoes as well as just like golf or any other thing, activity that you may need a different sole for or just a slight modification. You can buy, have just a different tread and have a lot cheaper and easier to carry around. Thank you. Okay, and our last team is from Rochester, show champ, sheep washer. Also in the interim here, I'd like to thank Cade back there running the board, running all the microphones. He is a student, so he's doing a great job. So thank you, Cade. Thank you for taking your time to come here and look at our product. Our product is the Show Champ Sheep Washer. It's kind of tongue twister. Uh, my name is Parker. This is Keegan. Hi. Colin. Zach. And Malcolm. Our show champ sheep washer will revolutionize the cleaning and clipping process of the show lamb industry. With our revolutionary design, you can walk your lamb up onto the platform, have the product rinse, clean, rinse and clean it for you. Then you will also be able to lower the sides, like they demonstrated, uh, with the stand with ease, to then shear or clip your lamb to be ready for anything that comes its way. With this new inventive way to shear and clean your sheep, we believe that our stand will cut your washing time in half, leaving you with a clean, ready sheep for the ring. These are the before pictures before we built it. We just had a stand. All we had was paint and just our uh, filter. These are the after pictures. And we did test it last night and it fully works and it is fully functional. And in your hand, you have pictures. It shows there should be a clean sheep to the right in the back page. That That is the one that we washed. And then the other two are dirty sheeps that we will clean. So it is fully functional and ready to go. What our company, what our company is about is making your life easier and your sheep happier and healthier. All our company wants is to make sure our customers are satisfied and get what they ordered. We are also planning when our product does well, we will go into more livestock products and maybe even to add on to this.
Our product is designed to be exceptionally pleasable to your local, local county fair, open shows, and to all people that clean their lamps. It is also great at being a low cost, high producti productivity machine. It offers a high quality build, strong water pressure, and an overall great structure to be able to wash and clip your lamps to get them ready for the show ring. Uh, we will be building these in Denver, Indiana. Uh, we're renting the building for $3,897 for every three months. Um, we will initially put down 11691 to confirm the building for our use and get it ready for us to start building. Um, our utilities are $1,000 uh, for every three months. And then we will prepay our insurance, which is $1,400. Then our vehicles that we can deliver to your farm or you can pick it up from our facilities is $448 uh, for six months for our vehicles. So our uh, cost of total tools and equipment to manufacture these is $7,063. And, $7 and um, our commission, each of our workers will get $566.33 per product sold. And then the retail price of the supplies needed to make the product is $633.29. And then we'll sell the sheep washer fully manufactured and ready to go to work on your farm for $1,179.885. That's our sale, sales forecast for year one up on the screen. And that's how it will grow in year two. And then that's year three. Thank you for your time. This is our product, the Show Sham Sheep Washer. Thank you. So, what was your inspiration for this? Well, uh, I started showing livestock uh, around three years ago, and um, we have some sheep and cattle and pigs and stuff. And uh, I guess I just got kind of lazy. Of, tired of washing sheep all the time and having to scrub them with your hands and getting all dirty and nasty when now you can just do it with one lever and you have soap and everything and it'll do it by itself. So the, the picture of the clean sheep, you know, obviously it works. How do the sheep like it? Um, so it also, I mean, it kind of depends on how much you work with your sheep, but um, he... Has, or she has no problems just standing on the sheep, standing on the shoot and walking up on it or anything. Because, I mean, we've done it a thousand times. Does it take a lot of water pressure to get water out of all the nozzles? Um, no. We have a pump. I can actually go get it for you if you want to see it. But we have a we have an extra pump, and it. I mean, we just connect the hose to the end of it and run the pump through and it runs at 40 BSI or so. You can also run it out of just a straight garden hose to make it more feasible for your everyday user. Yeah. And it runs about 5 to 10 PSI with that. So it isn't going to do as good of a job just straight out of a garden hose, but it still works. Congratulations on creating a product that's ready to go and that you're going to create it and take use. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. So that's our six teams. I would not want to be a judge this morning. I just, I, they've, got, they've got some tough work to do. Um, at this time, we're going to take about a 30 minute break. We might give them a little bit longer since we're ahead of schedule. And um, in the meantime, RTC is in the back. And any of the teams, they'd love to interview you, you know, ask you about your experience with the competition. So feel free to run back there. We're also going to do a little bit of surveying with the students if you cooperate with that. Kim will help with that. So um, we'll be back in around 30 minutes. Um, our group is Soul Safe. We were the door um, security uh, group. Um, my name is Wesley. Over here is Braden, Eric, uh, Tanner, and then Jake. Um, with this, it was a very long process. We had a few uh, e-learning breaks that we had to work through, and it was a long, tough pro process. Um, each of us did a portion, and we shared, we collaborated. It was really fun, and by the end, we had a product that we were really proud of. So you guys have kind of one of the more unique
products, uh, products of uh, any of them that we saw today. Um, who kind of came up with that concept, and, and uh, you know, and then you actually had a, a little bit of a, a working model as well. Um, so, the idea was we were fishing around trying to find something that we were like, we know that people will like. It's going to be used by everyone. Um, so we started off with just random things, and it was about two or three days into the brainstorming process. We came, I came into the class, Eric came into class, somebody came into class, and we were like, um, I was at, coming into the house yesterday with groceries in my hands, and I was like, I don't really want to put these down, and I don't really want to have to, you know, go around in my pockets, unlock, and then pick them back up. So we were like, that's something that's uh, very convenient that we can um, go after, and then we ended up coming with, up with the design with your foot, and that was about a half of a week or so within the brainstorming to the actual idea and us making and starting to make it. It looks like a really good product, and uh, you know, hopefully, you guys enjoyed the, the whole process uh, yeah. coming up with it. Yeah. So, uh, good luck to you. Really Thank fun. You. Thank you. Hey, Cress. I'm a senior at Caston. And I'm Skylar Hurt, and I'm a sophomore at Caston. And together we created Season Camper. Basically, it's a product that's a little pill capsule with spices in it that dissolves in water with no mess and no, I mean, no small. Waste. No waste. And it's meant more for outdoorsy people, people like campers and hikers, um, people who don't have a lot of storage space in their backpack. So you can just put that in your pack and it's mess free and waste free and it's easy to carry around. So yeah, that's Season Camper. And we created it because my I go camping with my grandma every year. She loves to cook and but never has enough room for all her spices. So she puts them in a pill bottle and it makes a huge mess. So this is a lot easier. And I was inspired because I can't cook or season food. So having something like that would really help me out. Just a little single serving thing you can just put in your food. That would really help me out, I know. So yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, so the one thing I was kind of, when you guys were doing your presentation, you actually can drop that into a, into water and then the, the whole thing just dissolves. And yeah. Mm -hmm. you have a seasoned broth kind of. Yep. Yeah. It's single serving and we, we didn't mention this up there, I kind of forgot about it, but uh, on, in each pack we're going to include some recipes to go with it. So if you want to do more than one serving, we can show how much you would need for each one. Yeah, in our future, if we if this was an actual business in our future, we would plan on having more spices available and just different things like that. So, but right now we have six spices. They're salt and pepper, Italian, garlic and herb. We have a chili seasoning and then a Caribbean jerk seasoning. It's a really neat concept. I, you know, I'm one of those people that camp a lot. So that's yeah. uh, that's sounds like something that campground but uh, like you said uh, yeah home as well yeah definitely oh, yeah. all right well good luck to you thank you so our company is tread lightly and basically it's shoes but you can remove the tread on it so you can have multiple uses for one shoe whereas like me personally I have to have multiple shoes for doing sports but this would cut out those extra shoes and just have smaller, easier to carry treads. Um, and then with the treads, we have it so we can do different sports and different activities. We're making multiple treads for each one, and then you can just switch them out. We're using kind of like Lego idea to kind of click them together. That way, it's a very easy, quick, secure click. Mm -hmm. And then you can go from one sport to the next, especially if you're having a really busy day or you're switching between activities during like track and other things. Conceptually, how, how hard is it? Uh, is that something you can do while their shoe was on, or do you have to take it off and, and put them together? We're hoping to be able to do it while it's on the shoe, considering we're just kind of clicking it together to secure it. Yeah. So, in theory, as long as it isn't horrible at the bottom, like you didn't get it super dirty, mm -hmm. we can just do it while the shoe's on. Yeah. Sounds like, uh, you know, like you said, when you're going from, you know, running to, uh, you know, sprinting or something where you have to have yeah. spikes or something like that, that would be pretty handy to Yeah. 
because uh, I know those are those are tough to carry around in, in your normal bag. And Say I have to have an ex spe specific bag just to carry my spikes around, so. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a great concept. Uh, you know, it sounds like one of those that uh, if you can get it to work, you know, to mold together, literally, right? Uh, it, uh, it would be really neat. Yeah. Uh, so the whole process of, uh, of doing this uh, has it been a, a lot of, you know, how challenging, you know, how much fun was it to, to do this process? And I have anything to say? Okay. The hardest part was probably finding a company that was has the ability to make custom molds to be able to make for our treads and our shoes separately. Mm -hmm. But other than that, most of it was just finding the numbers, getting the percentages down. Yeah. Was this kind of the first thing that you came up with, uh, you know, concept-wise, that you said, hey, let's run with this, literally? <laughs> yeah. 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 Cool. Well, we wish you good luck, and, uh, you know, the judges will be out soon, so uh, best of luck to you. All right. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Um, my name's Colin Wyand. My name's Zach Slosher. My name's Colton Ferber. I'm a sophomore at Rochester High School. My name's Keegan Reinhold. I'm a sophomore at Rochester High School. My name's Parker Wallace. I'm a sophomore at Rochester High School. My name's Luke Malco. I'm a sophomore at Rochester High School. And our product is a show champ sheep washer. And I guess we just kind of came up with the idea by... Um, we started to brainstorm because we got this project assigned to us and we came up with the idea of trying to cut time in half for showing uh, showing sheep and agriculture stuff and me and him both do uh, showing and livestock and all kinds of agriculture. Involved in agriculture yeah. And we kind of just came up with the idea that I mean we can cut washing our animals in half like to half the time and I mean it takes five minutes to wash a sheep now compared to 10 to 15 and then just had to drag everything out and use your hands and get all messy and and I mean the company can expand extremely easily to uh, cattle you can wash goats in them you can make cattle ones you can wash pigs in them all sorts of stuff and it's uh, it's a great advantage that we made our walls the way they were because obviously in a lot of livestock you have to clip um, your animal or cut their hair or uh, pretty much groom them and a lot of there's there's companies that have like sort of the same thing but you can't adjust it so fast that you can just now you can clip your animal on the same thing and get it I mean you don't have to move your animal at all to get it completely ready to show the, the same stand for grooming and for everything. Yep. Yeah. yeah. The, you could. The next thing you could do is uh, come up with an automatic uh, trimmer, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That'd be a little tougher, probably. But you guys had a very um, well-made uh, product. You had a product that was actually ready to go. Used, and you had yeah. pictures of uh, you know that and you showed the judges. So I, I think that's going to help as well. That it's not just a concept in your head. Yeah. It's actually it's, something that works. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we have physical proof of it working and showing and everything, and, I mean, it's a crazy difference of how much it did work. I mean, the other sheep were brown in the pictures, and, I mean, it is, like, bright white compared to the rest of them. Yeah, and also, too, you know, for all those folks that want to go green, right, you're, you're probably going to use, if you're only, you know, a third of the time, yeah. you're going to use less water and yep. all that as well. Yeah. A lot less water wasted from your hose just running out the whole time. Yeah. I mean, you just shut it off as soon as you're done. Or you can go out there in your Sunday church clothes and wash yeah. your sheep and get them right. ready to go. And then for for yeah. those that haven't done that before, that's that's yeah. it's quite yeah right? it's quite yeah. the process yeah. normally. Right. You can wake up before school. I mean, I actually used it right before we brought it in. I used it and I washed one of my sheep right before school. I mean, it took me. 15 minutes to get it out of the back of the truck and get it washed and everything and put it back in and I was ready to go. Yeah. I mean, I was ready to go to school after that. Yeah. And, and it wouldn't take much, like you said, to, to adapt to, to goats. Yep, yeah. Yeah. a goat uh, could use that. you have to build a new one for, for cattle. Yeah. But, you know, those, those cattle folks are, uh, you know, they're used to spending big bucks for yeah. that kind of stuff. So yeah. They, they that was our first original plan was the cattle, but... Right. It's kind of just easier on time for us being right. in school and you only have an hour a day to work on it. It'd be easier to make a smaller product and eventually move up and expand. Right. 
Yeah, it'd be a little harder to pull than a big cattle one in here. <laughs> yeah, so. definitely put wheels on it. Yeah, well, it's, it's a neat concept, and, and you know your concept is there, and it's it's proven that it works, so that's that's even better. So good luck to you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank All you. Right. Just tell us a little bit about who you are and your product and how you guys came up with it. I know you had a, an experience that obviously led to the, the concept, right? Yeah, yeah. I broke my leg in September last year, and I was in the boot, like the old medical boot, for about five months, five to six months, and then I started relearning to walk. And um, we came up with this because I was having, like, harsh bruising, added pain to, like, where I didn't injure myself. So... I was just, we could prevent these pain, added pains, so that's how I, we formed. So you guys are from Valley, right? Yes. So um, it sounds like the, the concept of the boot is that it kind of goes in increments, right? To where you go from a very hard, a little bit softer, a little bit softer, so then it, it doesn't transition you like from right from that rock hard. Yes, to, yeah. Out to, uh, yeah, that's, that's exactly what it is. Um, to slowly start to be able to control, like a controlled, I don't know, just, you know what, I, like, Recovery, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, just to make it easier on your body, on your injury, just make the process simpler, and if they're going to physical therapy, then their physical therapist can control what's going on with your body. Yeah, and I know you said your therapist was really excited about the idea. Yeah, yeah, she, she loved it. Yeah. So. Well, uh, we wish you luck here, and uh, hopefully you guys can, uh, you know, have some success, you know, moving on and, and actually, you know, bring <laughs> something, bring that product. Yeah, in. yeah. Yeah, that would be great. Thank awesome. you. Thank you. Tell us, uh, tell us who you are, and, and tell us a little bit about the uh, product and, and how it came to be. All right, so my name is Andrew Burke. I'm a senior at Tippecanoe Valley, so my product was Hello World, which was the world's first audio-to-audio -audio translator app. And it kind of came out of this idea of, I'm, I wasn't a great student my freshman and sophomore year. I was kind of lazy and didn't put in the work. And I didn't do great in my French class that I took. And I thought about later and looking back on it, I was like, I'm really confined to what I can speak. I can't speak to someone who speaks Spanish or German, but a product like Hello World would be able to make that easy to do. So you can uh, basically just speak into the app and then it will translate into a, a language that uh, then it will relay that back out. Yes, right. So you would just select the language you'd want it to speak back out because there's like 10 different languages that I wanted to start with. And so then it will listen and it will give you a little text verification because if you say something and it's kind of murmured or misunderstands it, it would give you a text verification so you can say what you want to say and not mess up and say something wrong mm -hmm. to someone else. I know that some of the translator apps that, that are out there are a little bit uh, wonky sometimes. Yeah. As as actually getting it right, so that's that's a good extra feature for you. Mm. So that yeah. you, you can make sure that it knows what you're wanting to say. Yeah. So uh, has uh, has this been something that, uh, you know, obviously you said that you know, it goes back to your um, high school French class. <laughs> has this been something that you've traveled a lot and, and thought, man, this would be something that I... Kind of I just kind of thought of like in our community there are opportunities to speak different languages to different people and I'm not able to do that to other people but in my head it was like I've I've traveled across the country not globally but even in those experiences there have been people that I couldn't interact with due to language barriers mm -hmm. and so that kind of also inspired that too yeah well it's a great concept and yeah. uh Hopefully you can uh, keep working on it and, and get that out and, and uh, we'll see that in the App Store sometime soon. All right. Thank we you. Have the scores. Judges did a great job this year. Is Kendra here? Yeah. Is Jillian here? Do we have our time? Just hanging out down there. Okay. Just want to make sure everybody's in place. Everybody in, in the auditorium? Okay. All right. So what we'll do is we'll start with sixth place and move up. Um, please, when you come up to the stage to get your certificate, and Tiffany will present the certificates, if you could, uh, and the money, right, the important part, the money, if you'll stand around the REMC sign, I know some of you already have, but these will kind of be the, the place pictures, and uh, anybody can take pictures at once, too. So, okay, here we go. Oh, scores were close. In sixth place, winning $100, show champ sheet washer.
from Cass, or from Rochester, sorry. <laughs> Good job, guys. want to give feedback or feedback to each team from the judges so we will work that in right now for show champ so um, I'll hit you up with what we all talk about as judges uh, you guys have a, a really good product and, and a really good idea um, if we would have had your business plan ahead of time like was on the schedule you would have placed much higher than what you did that was the only thing that really hurts you guys you did but you had a really good product I think you got something there, so keep pursuing. Yeah, great prototype. Yeah, good. Okay, thank you. Oh, sorry. Oh, good photos before yeah. and after. That was. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the sheet before and after. Yeah, yep. good. Okay, so there was a tie for fifth and fourth, but we'll go ahead and just announce them in this order. In fifth place, winning a hundred dollars, Soul Safe from Rochester. Feedback from the judges. I guess I'll go, I'll go first. Um, the project was really good. Uh, the financials were very nice. Uh, one thing that we maybe had concern with was startup cost on on the project to actually get it going. Uh, but you know, liked uh, the idea is good, and you know, the use of kind of non-traditional sales avenues. Um, was was interesting to hear. Um, interesting idea, good thought. Um, a little concerned about what happens when power's out to everything. If you've got a deadbolt that's on your house that's got the house locked up, and how you're going to get that open? Um, maybe separate lock with key, but then that starts to defeat your purpose. Just some ideas to consider further down the line. I thought it was a great idea. Um, definitely a need for that type of product, but still not quite sure of the implementation of it yet. But thank you. Very innovative. Good job. Okay. Thanks, judges. Okay, again, this is a tie for um, fifth place, but the next winner winning $100, Tread Lightly from Caston. Thank you. Any feedback from the judges? Um, well, things that we talked about, were, um, we think it's a great um, idea to come up with a solution to 
save your parents some money when you're going through life. <laughs> right, true. <laughs> we always don't parents that. think that. Um, but just wondering, maybe we had some concerns about the stability um, mm -hmm. running and the, you know, what the impact of how stable it would be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, how, how well the fashion system would uh, keep the different trends on. Good idea. Mm -hmm. Some great innovative ideas. Very, very well thought out plan. Very, very good on answering questions and, and everything around that. So good job. Okay, thank you. In third place, winning three hundred dollars, seasoned camper from Casta. to say I like that you came up with a solution for your grandma. Yeah. <laughs> I wish she was here to see you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, neat idea. Past camper. Um, I understand what you're trying to do. Uh, I think you ought to look, maybe look at making a little bit smaller container for the people who do backpack overnight hiking that want to get things as small as possible. Uh, but I think it's a really good idea. I like that you made your own 3D packaging. Very good. No, really well thought out idea. Um, I particularly like the way you had a plan to grow the business. You would put money back to, to grow the business. Um, uh, one thing I thought was interesting, you had a couple different marketing streams in your presentation, campers and college. I would have liked to have seen maybe a different branding for the college student. Um, but other than that, you know, great idea. You're already looking to expand into different avenues, so that was that was good. Okay, great job, thank you. In second place, winning four hundred dollars. Hello, world, in Tippy Valley. things out and really understood the competition. Um, I think that you know, set you apart a little bit is just you had a really strong grasp of uh, what your comp competition was and that's a big key to a business plan. Um, would have liked to have seen maybe a little bit more planning for future growth on how the product develops over time, uh, but solid idea, you know, um, very well done. Yeah. Really, really neat idea. Um, be interesting to see how this can grow and what you can do with this. Um, I'd like to have heard a little bit more about how you would implement the translators and how they would actually do their job. Um, but all in all, really nicely done. Yeah, very useful, very needed. Good job. Thank you. So first place goes to Reboot from Tippecanoe Valley. judges? Well, first off, congratulations. Uh, it's nice to see you uh, address something that you had a tragedy that came out of to come to this point. Uh, 
I would like to say that the top three places were about as close as we've ever seen them. Uh, you guys all did a really, really good job. And just a few points out of everything we've done in our prejudging and your business plan and everything, um, we're within, within three or four points from top to bottom. So very good job for all of you. Very nicely done. Great job. I like your enthusiasm and also that you have your doctor's recommendation. I think that's the key to your success is the doctors um, promoting and your booth. So, but good job. Yep, did a great work, and uh, I like the you getting a medical professional on board early in this project will uh, help your success. Good work. Okay. I would just like to say I was impressed and inspired by all of you. You're very innovative and creative, and Great job to all of you. You're, I can tell you put a lot of work into your projects. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, judges. Um, I want to invite, I, I work with adult business owners and potential business owners <clears throat> every day. And <clears throat> you guys have had the best. I mean, these, these are every year they amaze me. I mean, we need this kind of innovation in our adults to keep thinking and coming up with ideas and solving problems. So I hope we can connect all that energy someday. You're invited, all of you, to take part in Fedco's resources for small businesses. We have a lot to offer, you know, education. We have the low interest loans. We have one-on-one -on -one counseling to keep you, kind of keep you moving. So if any of you are interested in moving on, please get a hold of us at the office. Um, I'd like to leave you with a quote, just real quick before we close. I love this quote when I think about you all. Um, a mind once stretched by a new idea never regains its original dimensions. And I hope we've stretched your mind a little bit. And we thank you for being with us, and we hope to see you again next year. All right.